Hey Sprinters, today we discuss should I buy Phantom or not? It's the talk of the town, it's growing immensely and there is a lot of FOMO around there. So should you jump in or not? I cannot tell you, but I can tell you what I did if I jumped in or not. And I can tell you uh, the 10 things that are on my checklist and the 10 things that you can go through when you decide if to go into Phantom or not, if to go into any asset or not. And before we go there, the investment systems, remember, you do not invest money that you need. Uh, you have an earning system that's working well, that feeds your saving system, and the investment system is where you put only that part of the net profit that you don't need for the next 8 to 12 weeks and so you put that into your investment system that works while you sleep and now you have three systems working which means now you have a self-healing and uh, um, self-repairing overall mechanism and now you have an anti-fragile a resilient a healthy overall revenue situation. The three revenue systems that you need. We will do single videos on them and we can share also our templates about the earning system, the saving system and the investment system over the next videos. Just let me know what you want to see first and I will do it. Now let's go into should you buy Phantom. First of all, where is it in the risk curve? If we think rewards and risk, where is it? I would say it's high risk and it's possibly high reward. So, somewhere here. <laughs> and now, of course, you have to decide how much do you want in safe, in risky and in high speculation zone and then decide accordingly. Uh, I will tell you what my portfolio is and I allocate exactly around these three buckets. And um, when you go in, you don't just need an entry strategy, you need also an exit strategy. So if you go into Phantom, decide at which price you get in and decide at which price you get out. And so my example here in my buy list is how I did it this month with Tesla. So my entry strategy is I buy the dips, I buy pullbacks at minus 5%, I buy corrections minus 10%, minus 8%, and I buy bear markets minus 20%, minus 25% and everything above, obviously. So if it goes into a pullback, I buy a little bit. If it goes into a correction, I buy a lot. And if it goes into a bear market, I buy as much as I can. I sell my bike to go in because that's when you have the highest arbitrage, obviously, and you buy at a discount. This is where the money is made. Then exit strategy not just when you get in, but also when you get out. Um, so my philosophy is profit taking. That means I sell every time I have doubled the initial investment. That's why I always write down the cost basis. The cost basis is at which price did you get in? For example, my cost basis for Tesla was 301. I write it down. Now, I bought 100 shares at 301 in August 2020. Then, December 2020, it reached 602. That's doubling. I sold 50 shares at, at the first doubling. Now, in November 2021, it reached 1204, which is again doubling. And here I sold 25 shares, half. And then if it would reach at some point a doubling again, 
I would sell 12 and a half shares. Why is this important? Because the hardest thing to predict, and don't even try to predict, and this is what everybody says, oh, it's so hard to get the top. You know, when prices go up and down, you have support level and you have resistance level, and people try to get exactly the resistance level, the top. I didn't even try to get the top of Tesla. I was close to it, but it didn't absolutely get it. And it's not important because to me, the important is my personal cost basis. And this is what I want you to understand. Whatever you invest in, the only thing that you need to check is not what other people are saying, uh, it is really what is your cost basis. Can you get in the 301? Then the only thing that matters for you is every next number that doubles. Can be in three years, can be in three weeks. It's not important. It's just important that you take some profits along the way because it will keep you honest and it's a wealth creation strategy. If you want a wealth um, a preservation strategy, then just differentiate as much as you can. Every every position at max 5%, you are differentiating. But we are talking here wealth creation strategies. That's where most of you are. Investment system is what we will now use to find out if we should buy Phantom or not. We will go to a couple of questions. One is, does it solve a real problem? And then it will be either green, yellow, red. Is it decentralized enough? Because if it's decentralized, it's unstoppable, like Bitcoin. But if it's centralized, it's at risk. There is one central choke point. And if it's something risky, I don't invest in it. Network effects. Does it have network effects? Because if it has, it will grow faster. And if it has, it also contributes to it being self-repairing and unstoppable because it has some self-healing mechanisms that we will need also when we check regulatory risk because there will be pressure from regulators in this area which is decentralized finance of course regulators will um, try to keep their status and so how will this react to pressure does it has longevity and self-healing mechanisms? Otherwise, we don't go in. Competition risk, is it hard to copy or easy to copy? Inflation risk, is the supply limited or unlimited? Investors, high quality investors, low quality investors, no investors, longevity, scalability, and sentiment. Now, sentiment is what 90% um, of the people base their decision upon. And this is really a problem. Uh, it's important to look at sentiment, but as you can see, I check sentiment only as the 10th category. And last week, uh, a friend of mine actually, who is a smart guy, he's a professor at the university, but he bought a title called Squid, which was based only on sentiment because people were saying, oh, Squid, like, like the Netflix series, let's go in. And it pumped like some dog face coins pump from time to time because of sentiment but when it's based on sentiment it pumps quickly and it breaks quickly so everything comes down to earth at some point and especially if it's based only on sentiment then you have basically no time up and uh, 10 minutes after our call there was a rug pull and the squid thing you can google squid rug pull um, went bust so developers created a backdoor in the system where they would just take the money and um, and uh, fly away with the money. That's it. It was a rug pull. Uh, so never go in only on sentiment. Okay. Then let's now apply this to Phantom, which I can disclose I have not been buying after this. Uh, selection, but it might pump if it's listed by Coinbase, it might pump very quickly. So, but why did I not invest in it and how can you go through 
your decision-making process. So, does it solve a problem? Is it urgent enough? Um, what can it help people do? And does it need teaching or is it immediately applicable? For me, it was yellow because yes, it can help uh, as a load balancer for Ethereum and it's similar to what Matic does, but um, this is something that will be required by everybody, so yellow. Then, uh, is it decentralized? It's not proof of work, so it's not fully decentralized. It's proof of stake, so how many validators do we have? Only 47 validators. That is a big problem. Red. Because there will be pressure in the DeFi space from regulators, from competitors. And when you have just 47 validators, if just one of them jumps off, uh, you, you are at high risk. So 47 validators, no. Red flag here and red flag at regulatory risk because of this low number. If you compare it to the, I think, 11,000 of Ethereum, you are not um, in a good position here. And also it breaks your scalability because how, how can you deliver if you have uh, this uh, situation? It, you cannot deliver a scaled version with 47. Network effects, yes, uh, but not the strongest ones. So I always like to see protocol over platform over application. So it, is it a foundation for something or not? And it's not a foundation. Some people say, oh, it's the ETH killer. It's not the ETH killer. It's based on the technology of Ethereum and it is dependent upon the technology of Ethereum. So no, from a strategic viewpoint, it's not an ETH killer. And then appreciate and depreciation. What's the supply and demand situation? Is there a limited supply or not? The total value locked is 5 billion, the market cap is 7 billion, that makes a ratio of total volume locked to market cap of 1.4. It's good, but it does not um, uh, qualify for the top 10 in the top 100 cryptos right now. And then there is sentiment, yes, sentiment is amazing. Uh, analysts top, Discord top, Twitter top, Telegram top, Google Trends, everything is uh, in FOMO mode. So is it a bad pick? No. Will I go in? No. If I would go in then just uh, below $2.21. And uh, But I don't go in because uh, I have much faster horses right now. Hope this checklist helps you decide if you go in there, but also he helps you think in first principles. So whatever hype is coming at you, you can use critical thinking and uh, hope that helps. If you like this, subscribe, uh, push the like button and keep rolling everybody.